Welcome to Forum 360. I'm Ardeth Keck, your host today. Music is a large part of our lives. We each have different styles of music that appeal to us, but the world would be a very strange place without music. With me today are Frederica Cohen, who has taught music for 28 years in schools and still gives music lessons. She is a co-author of the book on chromatic harmonica with author David Kettlewell. David plays the harmonica and has a top-ranked website on harmonica. He has written other books, plays other instruments and sings, and has had his own TV show as well. David, we need to learn what is a chromatic harmonica? That's a great question to start. A chromatic harmonica is a portal that opens the door for music for anybody to start with. So it's very exciting from that perspective. And unlike a piano, you can carry it. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and I really love that. Um, a chromatic harmonica, and I have several here. This is a small one that's about six inches long with 12 holes. This is a Seidel Saxony model. This is a Suzuki Sirius model that's closer to maybe eight and a half inches long with 16 holes, so there's more notes. And this is a Honer CX-12 jazz instrument that again is a 12 note harmonica, but a little bit different notes than the Seidel in terms of where it starts. So it's basically a breath instrument played with the breath. Um, and interestingly enough, it's played with a blow like an oboe, but it's also played on a draw. So in other words, it's in and out that you breathe, both. Just like how you breathe. It's in and it's out. And you know the correct technique, they oftentimes say, is like breathing. In and out with the instrument, not blowing into it or sucking on it. And of course it has reeds on the inside. And some of your viewers may be interested to see the inside of an instrument, and this is the inside of a chromatic harmonica with little teeny reeds that are metal. And now we have the, the inside showing uh, brass and showing some black parts, and that's what makes the music? That's what makes the music, as long as you've got somebody to blow into it and draw. Okay. You know, but what's the difference between this kind of harmonica, a chromatic harmonica, and a regular, as we know it, harmonica, say the kind of harmonica that kids would play? Well, there's a big difference. The harmonica that you're talking about that we say is like, you know, the regular, is actually what's called in the, in the field of music a diatonic harmonica. And that would have a scale of eight notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, da, 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 da. The regular octave. Yeah, the stuff, okay. But what about the notes between the notes, what are called accidentals or sharps and flats? Da, 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 Okay, so you got, you got more, you got, you got 12 notes, you know, in, in the scale that's chromatic scale and you only have really seven or eight there in the diatonic. Are they expensive? Well, I don't think so. I mean, not compared to other instruments. You can buy a decent starter harp in the $110 range. Professional harmonicas start at 200 and go up to thousands, but between 200 and 800 gets you a lot of harmonica. That's fairly expensive, but not out of sight compared to some other instruments. Do you have to read music to play a harmonica? No, no. As a matter of fact, uh, the most ancient style of, uh, of playing instruments was the oral tradition, A-U-R-A-L, which means you hear something. Dun, 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 dun. Da 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 You hear it, you mimic it, Mr. Parrot. Okay? And so if you hear a piece like My Funny Valentine, 
My funny Valentine. She can play it on harmonica, she can sing it. So my point is, is that you get to the point when you play with music in your life, which we really encourage people to do every day, to bring music into your life. It's one of the main themes in this book, love of chromatic harmonica, love, L-O-V-E, love of chromatic harmonica. And uh, we, we really would like to see people bring music into their lives every day, but it is affordable and it's an easy instrument to play at a beginner level and it's really hard to play it really well. So you've got this wonderful scope of growth and I think it's a terrific instrument. What do you think? I would agree totally. It's very a terrific instrument to bring music into your life with. And a, an easy way perhaps to bring music into your life. It's a very affordable way, an easy way, and it's an enjoyable way. To why do did it. you get started with harmonica? I gotta ask. how you? Why did you get into this crazy thing? It's something I always wanted to play, and when the opportunity presented itself, I jumped at it. Uh huh. Okay. I I want to hear you play something, but first sure. we're going to talk about music in general. And Frederica, you've taught music for many years. What age group did you teach in the schools? I taught elementary and middle school children when I was teaching. Okay. Did you teach them to sing, play an instrument, or both? I taught them to play violin, viola, cello, and string bass. Do you play all those instruments? I play violin, viola, and cello. String bass was sufficient to teach them. I play other instruments as well. I play euphonium in my brass ensemble at church and in Tuba Christmas. And Tell me what a euphonium is for our audience. A euphonium is, you could call it, the soprano member of the tuba family. Okay. Okay. Um, that's quite a lot of instruments. Tell me, what role does music play in your life? I can't imagine my life without it. It's been part of my life since I was nine years old. I'm a retired music teacher now. My music has been a bedrock for my life. It's been a, it's been a s part of my life that I can't imagine it not being there. It's been a s part of my life that has given me stability, a job. Perhaps happiness. Oh, it's been happiness, but it's been a job that people say when you enjoy what you're doing, it's not work. And it wasn't. This Beautiful is music is like, it's a magical healing thing. And it gets into you and it changes your thinking. And I remember two or two and a half years ago, I said to myself, you know, getting younger, of course. And I said, what do I really love in life? You know, what do I truly love deeply? And I thought, music. And that's when I started to pursue this. But in a world that has a lot of electronic gizmos, and there's a lot of pluses, you know, Thank goodness we have the wonderful media that we have to learn so much in the web. But there's something about doing it and playing it personally that brings the magic, the healing, and the joy of music into your life every day. And it will change your life for the better. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. And music has opened up doors for me all through my life that I don't think would have been opened if I hadn't been part of music. And that, that includes uh, not only playing, but listening, I assume. What kind of music drives you? What kind of music is your love? The first thing that people ask when they get into music is what are they like? The longer you're in it, you ask a different question. What is it? I'll go into the library, close my eyes, and grab 12 CDs, put them in a bag, bring them home. They're all well played, but they're all weird kinds of music. I play along with everything. And that would be classical. I, I, my personal style is romantic ballads from the 1940s and 60s. Beautiful songs like Moon River, My Funny Valentines, things that Frank Sinatra might have sung or that Chet Baker would play. I love that lyrical sound or opera. But 
they're all fun to play along with and I see them as all valid and that's something you said over the years is you see the validity to all music. What's your favorite? I'm classically trained and I enjoy classical music but my tastes are very eclectic and wide-ranging. I enjoy Celtic, I enjoy jazz, I enjoy folk music. There's hardly a type of music that I don't derive pleasure from out there. Hmm. So, and, and classical as well. You said you're classically trained. Yes. Classical I mean, as well. I go to the symphony. I, I enjoy playing jazz, just got into that recently. But there's hardly a genre of music that I don't enjoy and can't derive pleasure from. How about rock? Rock and roll, classical rock and roll, the old style okay, rock and the roll. The old style yes, rock and roll. I enjoy. When I was young, we thought that was wild music. We don't anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> considering some of what's out there now, no, mm -hmm. the old style rock and roll was not wild. Yes, <laughs> right. Well, let's hear a little chromatic harmonica. Um, I'd like to talk about the book after that. David, what are you going to play? Well, what do you think about Moon River? Do you like that one? Definitely. Moon River, wider than a mile, I'm crossing you in style someday. I don't know what this song means. I sing it, I play it. See if you can figure it out. But I love the song. That much I know. So this is the harmonic I'll be playing. It's Seidel Saxony. This is a little slide in it. Takes it up a half tone if I need it. And so here we go with the band. <laughs> This is Ardeth Keck, and I'm your host of Forum 360. And uh, you, what you just heard, if you were listening, is David Kettlewell playing the chromatic harmonica and singing Moon, Moon River. We also have with us Frederica Cohen, who is a past music teacher in the schools for 28 years. She's retired. Um, what's the title of the book that you're co-authors of? Love of Chromatic Harmonica, Techniques and Advice from the World's Best. 
um, it's been a big hit in the harmonica world, and I understand you have students from all over the world taking Skype lessons with you, David. Um, tell us about how the book was done. Well, uh, Frederick and I had taken a class, and we felt that there was no definitive book on the method of playing chromatic harmonica. How to develop the breath control on blows and draws equally, because you have to have control of the instrument from a very low volume note one of the techniques is to learn how to use your breath. Another is how to do something called vibrato, which is done with violin and ah, that's voice vibrato. Mm -hmm. Or provides variation to the note. Um, there are a lot of techniques or bending a note. taking a note flat and bringing it back. So there are techniques that are taught in the book. But then we got the idea of starting to interview some of the world's best players, and it started off with two of them. And we did two, and then three more wanted to join. And it ended up with like 27 of the world's best players from all over the world. And that represents about half the book smack in the middle, 340 pages. It's just one interview after the other where people share how they think about music. Like one guy in Japan, he's picturing a mountain while he's playing. And he told me, if I see the mountain, so will the audience feel the feelings I feel when I picture the mountain. Some of the players have been reading music since they were young, and they read faster than we read words, and they're just extremely skilled with scales and reading music, and others can't read a note. People that are world famous, and that's one of the things I love about the harmonica, and that I think Fred Riedela, it's the equalizer. You can come into this instrument with so many different approaches. So the book is a method book for the first 100 pages, 340 pages of interviews, which I thought were fascinating about, like Talak Olestead, who um, lives in, uh, over in Europe, in, in Holland right now, and he said the real job of a teacher in music is to teach the love of music. It's, it's not techniques, it's the love of music. That kind of opened my eyes up, you know, quite a bit, and the whole, the whole process of how do you find your sound? Everybody starts off with, in the instrument world. I want to sound like Stevie Wonder. I want to sound like Toots Thielmans. But you can't because only they sound like them. But there's one person that you can play better than anybody else in music, and that's you. But hmm. you've got to find out what is it. And then the rest of the book in the back is filled with uh, reviews of instruments and customization tips and study tips and scales that you can do and just all kinds of things sound systems and how they work but it's a um, you know it's it's a it's a uh, 670 page isn't that what this 678. is 78 okay 678 pages wonk it's a it's it's a weapon actually yeah, you could hit somebody big. with it it could be used but it's, it's about 700 pages of, of information to help somebody get started with this instrument and make it happen if they're a beginner or if they've been at it for quite a while and maybe they didn't learn the basics very well. They get kind of log jammed in their improvement. They can go back and start relearning things so that they have a firm foundation of technique and then their playing can improve and improve and improve. Okay. Um Speaking of the love of music, Frederica, how valuable are music programs in the schools? I think they're a necessity because they develop a portion of you that's not developed any other way. And it's, it's a sad thing when it's like, oh, something's got to be cut, whack, 
music because it's easy to do. And scientific studies have shown that a portion of your brain lights up with music that nothing else lights up. And if you go into a nursing home and you're playing the music from the era of their youth, these people will come awake when they've been sleeping in their wheelchairs or just sitting there in a chair and they start participating. And it's something that never leaves you. For all ages. For all ages. They have found 40,000 year old flutes in caves with a pentatonic scale, the most basic five note scale there is. Are you We're afraid budget restraints will stop these school programs? I am afraid they look at it as the most easily disposable thing there is. And it is the part that develops us in the most, in a way that nothing else can. And it makes each person a more rounded, better developed person and actually makes a person a better learner in the long run. And our children need this. Everyone needs it. And our children need it so that they can become the best student possible. Um, if you were talking to educators who are working on budgets and perhaps not placing the value of music that you do, uh, what would you say to them? Find every means possible to keep music there are other things that can be cut. You can charge for things, but not music. Okay. Listen Cult to that, educators. Yeah. Culture is synonymous with the arts. Culture of humanity is together with the arts. And we need to be good engineers and we need to understand math, but things like music, things like art, things like creative writing, they help to keep the human spirit alive, inspired, and excited about life. And that's just as important as being scientifically valid. I'd like to hear another number. What would it be? This is a piece that I picked because it's so different that you wouldn't say, Oh, it just couldn't be played on harmonica. It's a piece from opera, from Puccini. It's O mio uh, babino caro. And it's this lyrical operatic piece. I thought you'd get a kick out of it because it's very different. My little dear baby. Something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. Music plays a valuable role in all of our lives. And here we go with the chromatic harmonica. Mm -hmm.
Music is a journey to understand yourself. Music is healing. Bring the love of music into your life. Thanks for joining us today on Forum 360. And thank you, David. That was lovely. Thank you, Frederica. This is Ardeth Keck for Forum 360. Forum 360 is brought to you with support from Electric Impulse Communications, Kim and Harvey Nelson, Rubber City Radio Group, Akronist.com, Hudson Cable, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Forum 360 supporters, and the Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron.